Okay, so um, hello everyone. I'm Gan Shen from uh, University of California. Uh, and today uh, I'm going to talk about um, toward SMT-based refinement types in ACTA. So um, ACTA is a dependently typed programming language in which types can depend on terms. So um, uh, with the expressivity of dependent types, we can encode rich and precise properties about programs uh, using types and prove them hold at compile time through type checking. And uh, one of the standard example uh, to uh, refine uh, dependent types is the lens indexed list, uh, which is also called VAC. So here's the VAC definition from the ACTA standard library. Uh, it's parameterized over uh, underlying uh, element type A, and it has two constructors. One is the empty VAC, which has index zero, meaning it has lens zero. And another is the const constructor. It takes a VAC of lens n and return another VAC of um, lens n plus one. Pretty straightforward. So uh, with uh, this uh, lens index VAC uh, definition at hand, we can write some interesting programs. So here we are saying uh, we want a VAC of natural number of lens three. So if you give it um, a vector uh, more than three elements, it will be a type error at compile time. Um, so that's one use of the VAC. Um, another use is you can write a total safe lookup function that takes a VAC of lens n and an index less than n and always return an element of type A. So unlike a conventional programming language here, we don't need to use the maybe or optional or even return a runtime exception here. So, um, so dependent types are, are great. Uh, however, the full power of dependent types comes at a price. Uh, that is, writing programs amounts to writing proofs, and some proofs are kind of tedious to write. So uh, let's take a look at an example. So previously I mentioned this thing n type uh, means uh, natural numbers less than n. Um, it is actually officially called finite set in act as standard library. And as uh, one of its common says, you can sort of think elements of thing n as natural numbers in the set, well, uh, less than n. And uh, this uh, thing n type is inductively defined like this. It's uh, indexed by that, and it's got two constructors, f0 and f sub. So you can think of um, these definitions says for all natural numbers n, um, f0 is a member of thing second. So it's actually F0 is a member of um, all thing except thing zero because thing zero is the empty set. And um, uh, what F suck says is for all natural numbers n and i in thing n, F suck i is a member of uh, thing n, uh, sorry, thing second. So what it basically says if you have an element less than n and you add one to it, um, it's less than um, n plus one. Okay. Um, so um, there's some problems uh, with uh, this um, thing n type. So uh, the first one is um, thing n is not compatible with uh, NAT, even though we know clearly from its informal uh, explanation that uh, thing n is just a subset of a NAT, uh, but it's a completely new definition. So any function defined uh, on NAT need to be redefined for thing n all over again. And you might need some conversion between thing n and the NAT uh, to make uh, your code work. Uh, another thing is that uh, thing n doesn't allow subtyping. And this is uh, particularly um, cumbersome. Um, if uh, let's take a look at this uh, predecessor example. So here we're trying to write a predecessor function that takes uh, thing n and then return the predecessor of that thing n. And let's just assume the predecessor of f0 is still f0. So the first case is pretty simple. So, and but for the second case, uh, ideally we should uh, only need to return x here, but um, Agda is not very happy about this because um, it's saying there's a type error. Why? Uh, because it says x has type thing n, but here we want a value of type thing second. And this type error is, um, well, uh, a little unacceptable because um, uh, from our informal understanding that um, 
natural number less than n is obviously also less than n plus one uh, term. Act uh, stubbornly uh, rejects that. Uh, so to fix that, we need to use an auxiliary function called injective one, um, which is a proof that uh, for all natural number, sorry, sorry, for, for all, all thing n, or for all thing n, it's also a thing suck n. Um, then use this injective one function, we can finally finish our predecessor function. Um, so here we see uh, the problem is not only we need to write an extra function to finish um, predecessor, uh, and also if you look at the definition of injective one, it computationally does nothing. It uh, keeps the underlying thing and structure intact, um, but only changes its type. So imagine having to call these kind of function uh, in production code, uh, that will be very unacceptable. So um, can we do better? Uh, can we improve on this? Um, that's the reason we turn to an alternative type discipline called refinement types. Um, so refinement types have been while, uh, around for a while, so I don't think I need to go into very deep here. So basically it's um, a type written as this set comprehension notation. It, you got your uh, plan-based type, um, which kind of give a, a cost grand shape of the value being defined. And then you have the refinement predicate, which is used to further constrain the value being defined. And um, with this refinement type at hand, we can define uh, our thing as this new definition. So it's just a natural number uh, paired with uh, a predicate that it's um, less than n. And uh, what makes refinement types uh, particularly useful is that uh, it supports uh, SMP-based subtyping. So here, um, the subtyping rule says, um, if you have two refinement type with the same base type, uh, but um, uh, one with uh, refinement predicate P and another one with refinement predicate Q, uh, the one with P is a subtype of the one with Q if P implies Q logically. And, um, and the nice thing about this is that this implication uh, query can be discharged to an SMT solver. So uh, we can automatically check this uh, subtyping relation. So coming back to our uh, previous um, example, uh, what we want to check is that thing and is a subtype of thing second. So we can build a um, 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 subtyping uh, derivation like this. Um, so all you need to show is just for all uh, natural number x and n, if x is less than n and uh, x is also less than n plus one, that can be easily solved by an SMT solver. Okay, so um, having think, uh, how can, uh, can we use refinement types to uh, help ease the burden of um, dependent types? Let's talk about how exactly uh, to integrate refinement types into uh, ACTA. So um, one thing, uh, first uh, refinement types can be readily emulated in ACTA as uh, dependent pairs or sigma types. Uh, here we use a uh, record to represent refinement um, types. So, uh, so refinement type is a record that takes a, a base type of type set and the refinement predicate of type um, B to another set. And uh, it's got two fields, one is the value uh, being defined, another is the proof that uh, this value satisfy uh, the refinement property, uh, a predicate P. And then we give um, a syntax sugar to this definition. So we can write refinement um, just as our familiar um, set comprehension notation. Uh, so with um, this refinement uh, record definition, we can already write some program uh, using refinement types. It just, um, we need to provide a proof every time we uh, provide a value of refinement type. Um, so here uh, I'm defining a natural number equal to one. The proof is simple, just raffle. Here I'm defining a, a, a natural number uh, less than 10. Um, the proof is also simple. Um, um, and actually uh, these two proofs can be um, automated by ACTA's built-in uh, proof searcher. Um, here is a more complicated example. Um, here, here I'm saying uh, for all natural number n times n is greater than n times two given that n is greater than or equal to two. Um, so this proof is uh, kind of more complicated um, and the act of the building uh, proof searcher cannot uh, automate this. Um, so coming back to our thing and example, now we can define a uh, thing and um, as a 
natural number left than n, and then we can define our uh, predecessor function uh, like this. Uh, but you can um, notice here we still need to provide a proof, and these um, uh, less than trans and m less than one plus n is um, function from actor standard library. So, um, so as you can see here, um, even though we can already use refinement types, well, emulate refinement types using uh, dependent pairs, it's still common sense that we need to uh, explicitly construct a proof. And um, sometimes you need to look up into the uh, standard library to find out the exact function you need and then put them together to finish the proof. Um, that's tedious. Can we uh, make it even like simpler? Uh, so uh, what we are proposing is to use uh, Shmidi to automate these proofs. So Shmidi is the actor library that provides binding to SMT lib compatible solvers uh, developed by Wen Kolkov. And um, so essentially it provides a type uh, deep embedding of SMT lib script in actor and macros translating actor terms to SMT lib script through reflection. So combine these two features together, um, it enables automatic proving uh, and we can find its GitHub repo here uh, so having uh, talked about how we can use Shmiti, let's do a little demo here. Uh, so here I have uh, the exact same code. I have in slides um, uh, a natural number equal to two, uh, uh, natural number less than 10, and so on and so on. And um, so to use Shmiti, uh, first we need to um, decide which theory we are using here. We are uh, import the natural number theory, and then we use this natural number theory to instantiate the v3 backend. So we are using the v3 SMT solver, uh, and uh, uh, after you import this model, it provides this uh, solve v3 macro. So uh, instead of uh, write the proof manually, we can use uh, solve v3 macro to help us uh, solve um, uh, type check uh, this uh, program. But here, um, we can also use solve these three to help us uh, finish the program. And um, same here. And uh, not only solve these three can help us um, automate proofs, it can also show us counterexample when there's no proof. So let's take a look at this program. Um, let's say we change from uh, n greater or equal to two to just greater or equal to one. And if we call these, um, you will see here, Schmidt actually found a um, counterexample um, that uh, if n is equal to one, uh, these uh, doesn't hold. So uh, that's how uh, you would use uh, Schmidt to automate proofs. And um, yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, we're Schmidt is still under uh, heavy development, and we are uh, closely collaborating with when um, improving Schmidt to fit the need of um, implementing refinement types in Act. Okay, to kind of conclude this talk, um, the long term goal of um, integrating refinement types to Act is to combine the strengths of SMT based and dependent types based theorem uh, proving in Act. So we hope we can uh, make a tool that is um, both uh, versatile and um, easy to use. Yep, that's all.